Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Death. Welcome to a rogue-like tutorial. It is episode 14 and things are going swell. Things are going so good. I'm 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 surprised how far we got in, in this short amount of time. You see, we have like a full RPG going on. We can kill monsters. It's great. I love it. We're dying. So today, uh, I already hinted at, uh, at it last time around. Today, what I want to be doing is I want to be adding fading out. I don't I don't like the the way the the your your dead screen looks. This looks bad when I when I when I die. Yeah, this is like pff, immediately you are like, oh, oh what happened? Oh. You kind of want to like ease the player in. Also, when you start the game, like you immediately there, it would be nice if the screen faded in. You know, things like that. Um, so I will use a fade out and fade in function that I used in other programs before. So again, it's going to be over a copy and paste kind of situation where we're going to copy and paste some functions from other programs. Uh, but also um, there's going to be some innovation going on. Uh, we already used this in a breakout tutorial. Uh, I already showed you a kind of like fading out function or not. I'm going to might show a... No, actually in this direction, I'm going to show a video a link to a video right now, a card that you can click on from um, the episode from that tutorial that we did, where we did fading. So that might give you already an idea what how this works. Um, but I already also, I had some epiphanies recently. I kind of like I did some research on how to do fading even better. Uh, because the way we did fading last time around, I think was like this, we had like this wait state where, where for we like reset inputs and animations and kind of like wait it out until the timer ticked down and then we switch to a different mode. Um, it was kind of like this very complicated state machine solution. And there's a much simpler solution for to interrupt the game, fade out the screen and show stuff. And I'm gonna show you that solution now. So let's start adding some of those tools. Again, uh, I think the tab tools is generally gonna be for like very useful functions that can, you might be using in other programs as well. Um, right, so let me copy in something in here real quick. Yeah, right. So this function you might be familiar with, do fade. This is something I scavenged from, uh, from one of the demos when you, when you go in here and you go help, then you um, type in uh, install underscore demos. You will actually get a bunch of demos that was made that were made by by Zep from Lexolophil, and one of the demos is going to be Zelpy, Jelpy, and uh, it's kind of like this cute jump and run, and there was like a fading function in there. And I was like, how does that work? And that's this fading function. It's basically there is like a um, there is like an array that kind of like tells you to change all of the colors of a certain color to a darker tone, and then it kind of like loops through this array and changes all of the colors gradually into darker versions of them until, you know, all the colors um, and the, the longer it loops through this array, the more of the colors just slide down all the way to black. That's kind of like this idea. I'm not going to jump, go through this, this code again, because honestly, I, I have like just like a rough idea of how it, this works. And a lot of those numbers here, 1.46 and 22, they're kind of like things I just played around with until they kind of, it looked nice. So there's not really anything I can tell you beyond the thing that we already talked about in a breakout tutorial. Um, but there is some things that we need for this to work. So we are going to need a, um, a this, this array that tells us which color should fade into which color. So there's gonna be like an array and this is gonna be the content of the array. Bam. Uh, I'm gonna scroll through this so you can type it up if, you, if you're doing it manually. But um, I will also, of course, as always, post the code downstairs. So you can just copy this out. So dpal is kind of this area that we're using to kind of like, um, you know, animate the colors. Uh, so like, for example, this final color of 15 will turn into this color 14, right? This is 15, the 15th entry in this array, it says 14. Because this color, if it should get darker, it should turn into this color. And this color, the, the, the 14th color, should turn to this color. So this will turn to this color. And you know, and this color should turn to one. So you go from from 13 to one into this, like this into, into this. So you see like the colors will slide down into like darker versions of themselves. 
And if you again, if you run through this again, uh, through this array uh, multiple times, then all these colors will eventually arrive at zero. Um, yeah, so that's how it works. So this is what do fade does. Um, now, do fade also um, takes uh, takes into consideration this little um, this little um, variable called fade perk, and that's kind of like how much you're supposed to be fading stuff. Fade perk is if it's one, you, uh, you um, it's it's completely faded out. Kind of like the percentage of how far we faded out. At one, if we're completely faded out. At zero, there's no fading happening. Yeah, so you kind of like get the colors that you always get. Um, yeah. So when we start the game, I actually want it to be like fade perk equals one. I want this, the game to start out faded out and slowly fade in. Um, so the only thing that we just left to ask for do, to do is the. Um, To add this tool, this this function here, to add the do fade, we're going to add this to our draw function. We're going to add this to our draw always. So after the windows, we fade out the screen, and we're going to draw the uh, debug on top of it in case we want to see the debug. I'm not sure if it will actually work, but yeah, the do fading will basically fade everything that was drawn on the screen. So if you run this, it doesn't work. Uh, there's a syntax error next p ani. Uh, there's oh yeah. Because I added fade perk in here, there is no reason for me to add fade perk up there because we set it in start game anyway. Now this no longer works um, because we're not actually fading in. Okay, so for this, there is actually a different function that I use. That's kind of like a bit of a multiple step process here. Let me just bear with me for a while. So we have do fade, and but I'm going to have a second uh, function called check fade. That basically checks if um, you know we're faded out to any kind of percentage, then I want to fade in back again. So if fade perk is greater than zero, if you're faded out to any kind of percent, we're reducing it and we then we're doing the fade. So instead of doing the fade, we're actually doing the check fade. That's 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 the idea here. Um, yeah, so instead of do fade, we're gonna do check fade. That will act automatically handle uh, the do fade. And that's the good thing about the check fade function is as well, is that if uh, it's, we're not faded out, it will actually do any fading. So we're kind of like saving a bit more processing power. And as you can see now, it, it fades in nicely. And if we die, oops, <laughs> we didn't die. <laughs> We're dead, but then we're fading in. So that's good. So the only thing that, that's left to us for do, to do is to actually, we want to fade out stuff. <laughs> how do we fade out stuff? So in the previous, in the past, the way I did it, and that's what, how, how I did in a breakout function, is I, again, I had like this mode, uh, this, this entire like update function, you know, like update game. Uh, we had like a second different mode, game mode, that fades out and waits for the fading out to end and then switches to a different mode, kind of like a waiting mode. Um, but there is a, a lot simpler simpler way of doing this. Let me show you. Um, there's a nice little function that will ex exemplify the problem, the, how, how we're going to do this. Here, please, look at this. Wait, a wait function. This function we can just plop in somewhere and this will allow, we will just stop everything and just wait for a number of frames. It will actually override all of the draw and update functions that are happening. For this amount of time, the, the program will be unresponsive. And it uses this flip thing, this flip. So the flip is kind of like a command that basically just, um, just uh, waits for a frame, just does nothing. And so the only thing that we're doing is we are we, we're looping through through this thing, we are advancing this variable until or we're reducing this variable at it until it reaches zero, and then um, and each time in every in each time we're going through this loop, we kind of like wait for a frame. That's all we all we do here, and you can see kind of like already the power here a little bit. You can kind of like create like little. Um, little uh, like without actually exiting a function you can w um, you can actually make time progress 
because right now the way we execute functions they kind of like execute it in a single frame so everything in a function is just executed all the way through and then you know everything begins from scratch and then the, the screen is redrawn and this allows us to actually kind of like stop executing the execution of a program and actually um, make time pass so for example i'm going to exemplify this function here by just making sure that if we die we're going to actually wait for a couple of seconds so we can see what happened uh, so here, we check end, right? We're gonna go wait for 120 frames. And now we did. So you see this allows us to kind of like be a bit more, um, we don't have to create like a second mode. If you just wanna fade out until it's black, we're gonna like freeze the program and fade out then we can use a function like this to to accomplish the same thing. Let me show you real quick, just oh, just just, to, just just so we understand. Like again, look at this real quick. There is even no animation running, right? Every update and every draw function has been interrupted. Instead, we are like in this little loop, redrawing the same screen basically, or, or like, like just showing the same screen over and over again. Okay, so how are we going to do this? There is, a, again, another function that I'm gonna take out. I'm gonna, gonna reprogram because it's basically the same. Fade out. So this function is also using this wait, as you can tell here, and it's kind of like doing something very similar. It's kind of very similar to the wait function where um, it, we have to let it know how, how fast we're fading out. And if you not specified how fast we're fading out, it will uh, pick a, like a default speed of how fast we're fading out. And uh, if we're not specifying how long we wait, then it will it won't wait. And it will do the same loop that we had in wait here, except it will do the fading during that. And you can do you can in this loop you can do some drawing. It's fine. You can do some drawing, and that drawing will appear. So we can make like a you know alternative draw animation, alternative update um, draw game or draw function happen here, like a little, tiny little draw function. And then flipping will actually show the results of that drawing on the screen. So this will fade out the screen until we are completely faded out. And then if we specify that we should also wait a little bit, it will also wait. So this little function uh, like com combines a lot of function functionality in, in one. Okay, so let us see, um, I'm gonna, in the draw function of the in the check end function here, we waited for uh, for a little bit. Just we're gonna make a little fade out here, and it's gonna do like like I'm gonna fade out at this speed. Uh, that's something I figured out last time around. That kind of like that looked nice. And you can see that kind of like oh okay, you kind of like while it was fading out, you kind of saw that you've been attacked by a monster. That gives you a better idea of what actually happened, what killed you. And you see the fact that our player is actually sticking around. The, the player token actually is still there. You kind of you can tell that um, that you know why you were killed and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Good. So now we're fading out. Uh, we're fading in as well, right? Is that? Let me let me see real quick. Yeah, we're fading out and fading into the the game over screen uh, because again. And the fade out function uses this uh, this global variable that checks you know how 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 hard we should fade out the screen, and so when we switch back to the to the normal update function, we will be in the we will be running check fade, and that check fade makes sure that you know whatever happened whatever state we faded into we fade back into into normal uh, normal colors. Okay. So the only thing I also want to be doing here is I want to do when we press a button in the in the game over screen. Here, I'm gonna fade out. And I'm just gonna do like the default fade out here. So we're here and we can press a button and we're back in, in the normal game. Like so. Okay, so this is, takes care of the fading out, fading in. So now we have like a more, more smooth transitions between the different different modes. Um, I wanted to maybe that's something that we might do at the beginning of the next um, of the next episode. I wanted to add a little jingle here, so you, so there's like you know you you kind of died here. I think that's that's that would be funny to do here. 
Um, but yeah, that's maybe something that comes late. I'm not sure if you even do it now. I think it has something that we might do at the very end, where we just plop in all of the music. Um, yeah. On this end screen, we're gonna redo a little bit. We're gonna add some a nice logo and and like a menu, but that's something again that when later on we have like a menu system going on. So far, that's uh, everything is fine here. Um, so maybe something that we want to be doing until this last end of the episode is something I already talked about. Um, it would be nice if we could see how much health points we have. And here we kind of like um, we are in a bit of a pickle, as you can tell, where. We don't really have space to put a health uh, health display, right? Because there's like we're using the entire screen, and we kind of want to be using the entire screen. Um, there's, um, yeah, we can't like can't afford to like dedicate a part of the screen to some kind of display uh, because we already have, you know, all our screen is so cramped. I already talked about, you know, how the resolution is very low, and um, it's going to be already very difficult to create like interesting varied. Um, labyrinths and dungeons using just like the contents of the screen. So it would be nice if we had some kind of solution for a UI that that shows us the stuff but doesn't cover up the things that we want to be looking at. And I had like a solution for this where um, you if, if you sort of prototype, I had like a I created like a box with our health points in it, and that box would basically move around to make sure that's always somewhere where you actually don't want to be like we're not interested in. So if you were like in the lower part of the screen, the box would float up and would be in the upper art part of the screen where you don't have to be looking at technically most of the time. And as soon as you go in the upper part of the screen, the box will go down. So you're never in a situation where the box will maybe cover up your player or cover up some enemies that you are fighting against. So that's something we were gonna do. And we are going to now be using for this, the window system that we created the wind system. Remember add wind? We're going to use that to, to spawn a little box that just displays our health. All right, let's try that. All right, so we're going to call this, we're going to create here in this, this function, we're going to create a little thing. We're going to call this wind, uh, HP wind, health point window. I'm not very creative. And we're going to go add wind. Now I'm going to actually look at what kind of numbers I figured out. It's going to be 5, 5, 28, 13. Uh, these are kind of the good starting coordinates for this little window. And then uh, inside we're gonna do something like shift H for heart. And it's like five from five, close, bam. And you can see, okay, there's this little box, but of course now it's bad. Now it's exactly where we're standing. We want this, this little window to move out of the way. So here in the UI tab, we are going to create a new function update HP, I'm just gonna call it update HP. Update HP wind, um, do HP wind. Let's go do HP wind, that seems like a reasonable thing. Um, so here we wanna up be updating the text of our little window. Actually, it might be, a, might be even, we might save some tokens if you remove this and go like this. So HP wind, um, HP wind dot txt one equals heart dot dot uh, pmob dot HP dot dot. That's gonna be our current HP, then the slash, then dot dot again, and then it's gonna be pmob dot hp max so this will show us how much health points we have uh, so now we do the part where we actually moving um, we're removing the 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 box so um, we might actually do a similar um, function that we used for when we closed boxes remember that it was like like this little um, cool animation trick that that makes you know smooth movement appear like it makes like animations that have curves to them, to kind of like have animations that ease into a value. Um, so HPI is gonna be like the position, the target position for our for our HP window. And we wanna have to figure out if we, if it has to be at the top of the screen, so that's that's five, or if, if it should go at the, at the bottom of the screen. So we're gonna go uh, pmob, if pmob, 
if it's smaller than eight, which means it's we are somewhere at the top of the screen, then HPY equals, uh, and I figured out 110 was a good value. That's kind of like at the bottom of the screen. And all that we now do is going to go HP wind dot y plus equals and now comes the, the the formula the formula is always target um target minus um current position divided by value and so the value is kind of how fast um, the animation is playing how fast we're we're going to our destination and um we can now like plug in all the values so the target is going to be hpy the current position is going to be HP window dot Y and the value I figured out the value of five was kind of nice in this case. So that doesn't work yet because we're not actually running this HP win function anywhere. So we're going to do this in update. Now the question is, yeah, we're going to do this in update, update game. Hmm. Yeah, because that's the only position where we actually, um, we're actually moving the character. Yeah. Uh, da -da. There's some problem here. H the P mob is not doing good stuff. Why is P mob a problem? Oh, the P mob uh, minus a P mob dot Y. There we go. So you can see now we are at the bottom of the screen. Let's see what happens if we. Oh no, we. <laughs> it's actually difficult to go through those monsters. Let me let me remove the monsters. Like this, 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 this. Um, ah, so you see, uh, it looks choppy because um, we also want to run this during an animation. So we, hmm, I wonder. Yeah, actually, I've, what I figured out is we actually want it to always be there. So actually, hmm, let's try. Well, let's let's. What happens if we always do this? Yeah. So now it always works. It's kind of like part of our general draw function. The only problem I have is what happens if I die. But that shouldn't be a bit of a problem either, right? Uh, now we have to create more monsters so I can actually die. Let's put a bunch of monsters in here. Ah. Uh. Yeah. That's right. Now the the um, that's okay, but also the um, the window is is being drawn on top on top of the game over screen. So what I want to be doing here is actually I want to remove the windows when I go to the game over screen. So something like this gameplay. Okay, check end. In this case, uh, I want to actually remove the windows. This seems good, and now we're we're getting this this back. Okay, so this works. Now we have like a little, little. Um... Oh, by the way, something I, I realized: <laughs> all the, all of the, the doors we opened are when we start the the when we when we start the game from scratch. All of the doors will be will be open. So if you press a button now, all of the doors are open. <laughs> Oh yeah, so if you rely on this map, you're probably gonna need like an open door tile that you can close again, right? So you need something like this, you know, where it's like, okay, this is an open door now. And you want to change the, the, the closed doors into open doors when you open them. So at the end of the game, you can like reclose all of the doors. <laughs> but that's not something that we need for our random, uh, random um, dungeon generation. 
Okay, so this was it for today. We are uh, we have like a little we added a lot more like um, juiciness, so to speak. We added a lot of um, like nice little polish effects that that may that may um, may um, that make our game seem more refined. So I'm thinking about what um, what the next step would be. I think something that we can actually do next is start actually thinking about. Um, making the AI also more interesting to kind of like see if we can maybe make um, um, a more um, more interesting behavior here because something I don't like right now is like I don't like how the monsters are going towards us even if they don't see us. It doesn't make sense. It would make sense if the monsters would be like waiting in the room and only if we enter the room they would be like ah there is some guy and then actually go towards us. Um, but that's kind of like um, kind of like opens up a camera form, so we kind of have to figure out how to make um, uh, how, like um, line of sight calculations. So that's going to be another function that we're going to actually have to copy because this is something not something I will be able to uh, write from scratch. So line of sight calculations is something that we need to do, and then uh, a better. Um, Pathfinding, so our monsters can actually find their way around in the dungeon, dungeon, and not get stuck at like um, at stupid, at stupid um, obstacles. Cool. Thank you for joining me uh, this time around, and yeah, I will remind you that there is always there is the um, code for this episode down in doobly doo, and you should join our Discord because it's awesome, and you can test the game there and you can tell me how good it is or bad it is and what I should change. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.